Hey guys, today I'm presenting a really fun triple spell deck. Uh, it's like Lava Tombstone pretty much, but instead of like the guards, we have the Valkyrie, and then we have the Inferno Dragon, and arrows instead of Skeleton Dragons, because triple spell is really fun, and I had a couple games where it's actually working, so that's uh, what I wanted to present to you guys here. I hope you enjoy it, and if you like the video and want to try this deck out and it works for you, hit me up in the comments. All my socials are in the description. Let's shoot for 1,400 subs, and let's get into it. All right, so I'm gonna explain like how to play this deck a little bit and also what makes it so fun. Um, you can sit to double with this deck, which is what we did here. I'll, I'll speed it up after I'm done explaining, but I mean, you can sit to double with this deck because Fireball Arrow Zap can take out like any air counter. It's, it's just great. You have the Valkyrie, you have the Tombstone, you have Inferno Dragon. It's very, it's solid defense. But where you really mess up is if you go like Lava in the first play and up in single elixir. I wouldn't go Lava first play with this deck because you don't have too much defense. So if you could just make it till double and then start going in with your Lava pushes. Because if you can just uh, play, I guess, single elixir defensively, you know, don't really go in with Lava Hound if you can avoid it. I don't know how this performs at mid ladder. I'd have to check it out. But I think it's, it's rather the same, you know. Triple spells could be good in mid ladder too because you face a lot of uh, air counters there. So, I mean, with the Valkyrie and the Inferno Dragon and the triple spells, I think this could work on defense and mid ladder. I'm trying to think of like the, the cancer stuff you face, but yeah, let's speed it up here. We do go into double elixir. Um, what's fun about this is that it's so close to Lava Tombstone. But it's also close to like Lava Miner, it feels like. Because you can just use the Arrow Sap, you know, that go along with Lava Miner. And it's just, it feels so good to be able to Fireball Arrows and Zap. Because there's so many decks I face that I'm like, damn, I used Arrows Zap, I wish I had Fireball. I used Fireball Zap, I wish I had Arrows. You know, it just, it just, it's really annoying. And so I'm like, wait, why don't I just use all three of them, you know? And I've used this deck before, not this exact deck, but something like it. I've used it um, with the Night Witch and the Cage back in old meta. Also, I won a GC with it, I think, last month. So, this deck isn't, like, terrible. It's just off meta and weird, and I like that. I think it's kind of cool. And you see here, Lumber Loon, you know, we wait till double, and we have Fireball Arrows Zap for his, his air counters. And here we just go in with the Fireball. And then we literally, he freezes, but it doesn't matter because he misses the Lava Pups. That was a bad freeze anyways, but like, if he hit all of those, I'm not even sure what that would have done because I planned on zapping there and retargeting off the Inferno. But you can be Lumber Loon. I mean, Lumber Loon players like to sit till double, and I mean, you can sit till double with this deck, it works. But uh, let's hop into the next replay. Okay, so we are playing against Abdul Roger 507. He's playing this really weird e golem deck that feels like a golem deck, but it's actually an e golem deck. It, it's really weird, but the triple spells here win us this game. It's just crazy. Like, that's exactly what they do is they win us this game. They are very nice to deal with, like, beatdown decks, you know, with the Night Witch and stuff like that. You could just arrow zap and fireball if you need to. So I went with the Tombstone Valkyrie. I don't know why it switched here, but I think that's cool. Um, yeah, so I go with the arrows here, I think, just to get rid of the Night Witch bats. Yeah, so our Valkyrie can stay alive for longer. And then I do go in with the zap to make sure that our Valkyrie stays alive long enough to counter the Dark Prince as well. And then she goes ahead and takes care of the elixir blobs so that I'm able to get elixir on defense. And then we'll go in with a push because I often, I'm like minor with eagle and what, but I mean, often I like to wait for my first lava pushes um, after I get elixir from the eagle. Um, I fireballed it there because uh, I mean, that just breaks it off of our lava hound and allows him to keep. Uh, staying alive and chipping away in the tower and the plan there was to keep the lava hound long enough to go in with a uh, loon on the other side and then a counter push on the left lane and we did take up end up taking out the left lane here actually this will be my right lane but I mean it's your left lanes or whatever um, yeah so I like to create counter push I mean split lane pushes with this deck because especially with the Inferno Dragon, the Inferno Dragon is like a secondary win condition. He kind of just um, provides that urgency for the defender. Like, 
you have to take out an inferno dragon if you don't take it out it's going to take your whole tower and so you can use that as sort of a, like a diverge a diversion and so if you're up enough elixir you can go with the loon one lane and lava inferno the other and you can get away with it because he can't defend both lanes and if he tries to then just stack whatever lane you think is gonna um stay alive yeah and here he's built, trying to build up a little push but um we're just gonna handle it with the Valkyrie and the tombstone and the arrows there too yeah and then we don't use another tombstone because I was scared he was gonna cycle back to another elixir golem but excuse me what okay well the reason I didn't play another tombstone there is because I was waiting for his next eagle and we did play it on the next eagle so I was right I was just um, not watching the replay close enough and we go with just the lava in there just to create pressure because, I mean, like, he can't take our tower in 14 seconds if we create enough pressure. And then we do the zap there and we do a little baiting. And then I think we I think we take this tower too, which is really funny. Just for the BM, for the BM, Toxic Elixir Golem, random deck users get BM'd. So, on to the next one. Okay, so... What's funny here is that I was in the middle of class and my teacher, she just like tapped on my shoulder and I, she wanted to get past me or something. And so I was like looking up in the game. I was all distracted for like a good 30 seconds. And so I played this matchup. Okay, also it's backwards again, but I mean, I played this matchup back. I mean, Jesus Christ, I didn't sleep enough last night. This is backwards, but we played really poorly the entire like first half of the game. And then we... we use the split lane technique that I really like with this deck to come back and I thought it was a pretty good comeback we played pretty flawless the second half of the game so it was sick and yeah this is about the point where I was just um being distracted I was like what's going on you know you could see I wasn't even selecting cards at that point yeah and then we just did a terrible fireball there and lost the tower. And then we're just down a whole tower. Is it over? Maybe for most people, but not for me with triple spells. I'll be damned if I'm going to lose to log bait with triple spells. And this got even worse because it's like, okay, yeah, he's playing double barrel. Okay, well, why don't I just go in with the, with the, why don't I just go in, you know, with all my cards, my loon and everything. Well, that's because apparently he had rocket and double barrel users don't use rocket, but apparently he did. So now we got literally no push at all. We are tied in elixir, but I mean like he's up an entire tower. So going into double down a lot, but we do manage to clutch up. All right, so I went tombstone in the back because that's a play I like to do against the uh, goblin barrel decks and graveyard decks because uh against graveyard it kind of immobilizes them it just you keep you, you, you're not going to go get as much effectiveness out of a graveyard if you play it on top of a tower with a tombstone same with the goblin barrel you just prevent a couple hits and you know it's it's really nice and here we go with the split lane push boom he's sitting at 10 elixir what is he gonna do he's lava inferno in one lane and on valkyrie Loon the other land. And you think, okay, well, maybe he tries to pull the Valkyrie with the Skarmie or something. And then Rocket Saloon. What about the other side? Because I'm about to use this clever zap on his uh, Inferno Tower and arrow his Dark Goblin. So let's see what happens here. He uses Dark Goblin. I zap the Inferno Tower. I arrows. He rockets. And just like that. We got a Loon hit too, by the way. And look at this. 24 seconds left, and we got a massive push building up right here. What are you going to do against this? 15 seconds left, you're at 2 elixir. You either stop that balloon, or you stop this Valkyrie Inferno Dragon push. Which is going to be much harder than it looks. Because we're going to go in with the Fireball on the Dark Goblin, the Valkyrie survives long enough. And then we are going to zap this tower at the last minute at the last second and it takes the tower with barely any health on an inferno dragon which is freaking amazing and then it it, it just uh we play a little longer 
and uh, I play some defense until we can get another good lava push down. He goes with the Valkyrie. I go with the Inferno just because I want to kind of cycle it. Let me just go in with the Valkyrie here to stop that. And then the arrows to make sure no funny business. Goblin Barrel connections. You don't want them. If you can avoid them, then you want to avoid them. Uh, we go with the Zap there. And what that allows us to do is completely take out the Inferno Tower with our Inferno Dragon. The Inferno Dragon just... Oh! And it's just game over there. Because we fireball, and then we get the lava pups, and then we just arrows to wrap it up. The Inferno Dragon, I can't stress enough how much I love the Inferno Dragon right now. It's just, it, it's, it feels so good right now. It's just, you can use it as a secondary win condition. You can defend big pushes with it. You can get so much value in decks where they don't have a reset. It's just a great card, especially in this deck. Alrighty, so we are backwards again. I do not know why, but I like it because, I mean, red is my favorite color. So, like, seeing my cards and my perspective as red is actually kind of cool, in my opinion. So, he does go with the Lava First Play. We are facing Lava Loon Miner, and that was um, one of the matchups I was thinking might be tough for us because, you know, we only have one air counter. We have the three spells, but we only have the Infernal Dragon. So, how are we going to take care of his loons and stuff? Well... I will have you know that that tombstone position is a very good position. I will also have you know that I'm very bad at you know, lava versus lava matchups. So, your viewer discretion advised. There is a lot of um, cringy, choking gameplay in here. I, I mean, I, I feel like I had this game in the bag and then I just blew it. But, I don't know. I mean, I still pulled it out then, so... We go in here and it's like, okay, what if I just, what if I just zap this, you know? Then we get a Valkyrie on the tower and then we have a live Inferno Dragon. And then he arrows it for whatever reason he arrowed it for. And I mean, at that point, if you're so desperate you need to arrows it, just don't arrows it. Because if you're, you're going to arrows there, I mean, this is also a message for a lot of players. Don't arrows things that are going to take your tower anyways. It doesn't do anything. And I mean, it's just a waste of three elixir. He would be up three elixir instead of tied right now, but instead he is tied in elixir because he wasted arrows. And um, we just go with the inferno dragon. We go with the lob in front, I believe. I think we're trying to tank for the skelly drags or something. Yeah, and we do. Then it's just we fireball. Okay, big deal. You zapped. By zapping, you gave me enough time to get back to arrows. And also, I mean, we wouldn't even need to arrows that. I mean, the Inferno stays alive. And I mean, you don't want to just throw an arrows out there. It's three elixir, you know? I mean, it is double elixir now, but still, you don't want to just throw three elixir down the drain. So he does uh, go in with the Lava Loon Miner, or just Loon Miner push there, which is interesting. And then we were able to wrap up that whole push. And just like that, we're getting a huge counter push right here. And then we could just go Loon the Bokke. And it's like, what do you do? We're going to fireball the Inferno, I believe. Yeah, knock him back. And then I think we get two hits. No, he arrows, so just one. But still, look at this. That was a bad part on my half. I shouldn't... I, I was talking about the stupid overcommitments. That was a stupid overcommitment. That was taking my tower, and I shouldn't just left it. But, I mean, at this point, we're up so much that it doesn't really matter. I mean, he's going to try and pressure in the pocket. We just have to get back to our fireball arrow sap. I did go loon in the pocket, I believe, because I want a death bomb, and I used the fireball here. Because I was pretty sure that wasn't going to take my king tower. I would have fireballed that if that was going to take my king tower, but we just won there on the death bomb. So this is a very fun offensive deck that I recommend trying out. See how it works for you. Maybe it's not a great deck, but I think it, I think it works pretty well. And it's also fun to play, and I will probably try it a little bit try and get the 7,000 with it because it was working for me it's not like it wasn't working but I mean I will also try it the rest of the season or maybe not I maybe I'll switch based on how it is and then I will check out the balance changes and see if the deck is still good then so I hope you all have a great day and enjoy